And uh, what I'm going to say and introduce is uh, how could we uh, engineer the surface and the interface of like anti materials and devices for better devices. Okay. And uh, firstly, I just uh, int briefly introduce what we are doing in my lab. So we are a kind of uh, like a electrochemical engineer lab. So we are working on electrochemical engineer and the processing of materials. And also uh, we use those materials for the battery, for the fuel cell, for the electrolyzer, for different kind of uh, electrochemical devices. So we are very interested in study uh, the charge transfer and the electrochemical process at the interface. Uh, something like that. And uh, also, uh, for example, we are very interested in uh, study the non, uh, the aqueous battery, particularly at the annual surface. We are trying to see uh, what's the uh, process, the chemical process on the surface of the metal. Also, we are also very interested in uh, developing some kind of carbon uh, based catalyst. Particularly, we are very interested in uh, study the carbon chlorine in the in the fuel cell and in other electrochemical devices, uh, which uh, they are using can, some kind of carbon as an additive or something like that. Also, we are very uh, interested in study the plasma enhanced like artificial photosynthesis to convert CO2 uh, to value added uh, chemical fuels, uh, or maybe we can upgrade some kind of uh, lower value. Uh, chemicals to a higher a higher value uh, chemicals by plasma enhanced photo uh, photosynthesis, uh, and also we are working on the reactor designs for the flow battery, for the electrolyzer, and for the fuel cells. So that's the uh, major uh, reaction uh, or research direction that's going on in my lab. Okay. But today I may not cover all those uh, directions. Uh, I will like an uh, emphasis, one of our recent discoveries on the uh, new strategy to passivate, to stabilize the metal anode for the aqueous batteries, particularly for the zinc-based aqueous batteries. So we are studying uh, the passivation on the metal surface, okay? And also particularly, we try to study why those kind of strategy can work well and from the perspective of thermodynamics and the kinetics. And also at the end, at the end I will introduce some other uh, follow-up work that, that are very closely related to this work. And the, the reason that why we are working on the aqueous battery because we know that the lithium battery, they are good. They already commercialized for a very long time, but uh, right now they are at a position that uh, they have a quite a lot of uh, bottleneck they need to overcome in order to develop better lithium batteries for the for the electric vehicle or whatever uh, heavy duty transportation uh, something like that. But uh, you should uh, you should be aware that uh, lithium battery somehow is not that safe because of the cell reaction at the interface and also decomposition of the components in the batteries when you charge the battery in an improper way. That's the reason because when you use the lithium battery, you cannot use it at a too high temperature or low, too low temperature just because of the thermal runaway at high temperature, uh, which is also a kind of, uh, because the reason of the carbon decomposition easily at, at a higher temperature, okay? But at a lower temperature, uh, lithium, the solubility of lithium in the, in the electrode, particularly in the anode, uh, the solubility reach to a limit where the solubility limit become lower and lower at a lower temperature. That's the reason you can, you will form a quite a lot of uh, really sharp dendrite on the surface of the anode. That can make the battery uh, has a potential safety issues. And uh, one of the pictures that I always show, share with other people is my personal cell phone, which is after two years usage because you can see the expansion of the, of, the, of the phone just because of the expansion of the battery. That is the initial signal of the potential safety issues. So, okay, that's the reason we're trying to develop some safer batteries to replace lithium iron. Particularly, we are working on, if we know the reason why lithium battery is not that safe, 
we can easily develop some safer battery. And as I mentioned before, because you are using some kind of uh, flammable components in the battery, for example, like uh, organic electrolyte or maybe some oxygen content, like a uh, cathode materials. So you can release uh, both oxygen and some other flammable gas during the decomposition of the components. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is a lot of side reactions on the, on the surface and interface. So that's, that's the reason battery is not really safe. To develop a better battery, probably you need to replace lithium with a non lithium So therefore you can partially avoid such kind of safety issues. And also you can replace non aqueous electrolyte with aqueous electrolyte because that can make the battery uh, much safer. That's the reason I want to combine these two points together to develop some battery that's the origin of the zinc batteries because zinc battery does use zinc anode and the magnesium oxide as a cathode materials. And uh, you have uh, some kind of aqueous electrolyte as a medium. So therefore you can charge discharge the your battery. And also when you look at this kind of ragged plot, you can see that the zinc based battery is, is pretty good. They show both high energy and high power as compared to other uh, rechargeable battery and non-rechargeable uh, batteries. So that's the reason you think battery show a really promised future that you can further develop it uh, to meet a, a higher demand from the market. And the most important thing is aqueous electrolyte is really cheap and they are safe. And uh, you, you, you haven't uh, like a compromise any kind of performance from the battery. Okay, so that's, that means you have a lower cost, but uh, still good performance when you use zinc-based battery. But the point is, zinc battery, aqueous battery is still not, uh, uh, not that uh, reliable because when you see the reaction mechanism reactions during the charging discharging, you will see that uh, uh, magnesium oxide cathode has a really straightforward reactions during charging discharging, which is just a zinc iron. Uh, insertion and extraction reactions similar to the uh, to the to the graphite in the lithium battery is based on uh, intercalation reaction. But uh, for the zinc anode, if you look at the zinc anode surface, you may have a lot of questions problem there because zinc is a kind of metal that can be naturally crowded in the in the in the aqueous electrolyte, and also at the same time you may generate some kind of uh, well, you can decompose the water at the interface. And again, uh, similar to the, to the graphite or metal anode in the, in the, in the lithium battery, <coughs> zinc anode may also have a kind of dendrite formed in the aqueous electrolyte. That is another reason that makes the, the zinc-based battery cannot cycle for a very long time, okay? So overall, you can see that then gradual formation, corrosion, surface corrosion, water splitting, and those those are the major issues that stop the wide spread use of the zinc iron battery uh, for the for in, in the market. Okay, that's also the challenge you need to think about how to overcome those challenges to develop a better battery. Okay, that's the motivation that mod that inspire us how to develop or what kind of issue we need to resolve in order to develop a better zinc battery, okay? And what we are trying to do is we try to predict a better materials because zinc naturally, uh, as I said, zinc is naturally uh, crowded in, 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 the, in, the, in the aqueous electrolyte, especially uh, if, you, if you are using it in the alkaline solution, okay? But here we, we try to design a zinc magnesium alloy because we found out that uh, the zinc nucleation and the diffusion on the surface of certain type of zinc magnesium surface, uh, they can be like uh, improved. I mean, the adsorption of the zinc at the atom on the surface and the diffusion of the zinc at the atom on the surface of the zinc magnet uh, surface, alloy surface, that kind of binding energy and the diffusion energy can be improved if you can properly control the composition of the zinc 
manganese alloy. And another point is we need to also think about how to improve the reaction kinetics, especially if, if you use it in the device level. The kinetic is always a kind of a challenge, okay? So that's the reason because we think about that we need to develop a kind of hierarchical structures because in that, that kind of hierarchical structures, you have a multiple different places that can hold the zinc ions when you do the plating process, okay? And another one is we are trying to replace aqueous, like a water-based aqueous electrolyte, use a earth abundant seawater as a solvent. Because we know that the seawater has a lot of different cations naturally dissolved in the seawater. And we think about that uh, those cations can be partly <coughs> beneficial for the energy stor storage in the zinc iron battery. So that's the reason we try to use uh, seawater as a solvent in this kind of zinc iron battery, okay? And here, because we have a, a pretty good expertise in the material synthesis and the controlled synthesis of different nanostructure and microstructures, so therefore we use our expertise to deposit, develop the zinc manganese alloy. And uh, the formation of this alloy is exactly uh, following the uh, Stransky growth mechanism, which is a really classic uh, material deposition mechanism for the zinc film, okay? So you can see that when we extend the deposition time, you can see firstly it's a monolayer or kind of fully, the substrate is fully covered by the film of the of the alloy and later on it form a kind of uh, kind of protrude on the surface of the of, of the of the subject. But between its protrude, you can see those dark regions. This is the this is the trench between the protrude. Okay. And if you see from the cross-sectional of the SEM, you can clearly see that the trench uh, is a really deep trench. It's from the surface to the bottom of the material, bottom of the, of the film. So, but you can see that each protrude, uh, they are individually uh, aligned on the surface of the substrate, which is right here, okay? And then we use those material for the, uh, for the thin current battery. But before that, we need to understand the intrinsic the chemical performance of the materials in the seawater, okay? So firstly, we do such kind of nucleation test for both zinc, pristine zinc, and the zinc mountains uh, alloy. So we can see that uh, this is a, a standard uh, like uh, uh, nucleation curve. So we can clearly see that uh, the over, over potential for the nucleation and the steady state growth of the zinc mountains I mean, the zinc iron nucleate and the growth on the surface of this alloy has a much lower over potential than the printing zinc, which means thermodynamically, zinc manganese alloy has a preferred zinc deposition or zinc nucleation growth kinetics, okay? And also we try to study the columbic efficiency of the of the materials because we know if your material has a side reactions happening on the surface, you may you may have a really poor and low columbic efficiency. If you, you your columbic efficiency can reach to a, almost a hundred percent, that means you can mostly uh, suppress most of the side reactions on the surface. Okay, so that's the reason we test the columbic efficiency, and we exactly see that it's almost a hundred percent columbic efficiency which means our alloy in the seawater has almost zero or none uh, side reactions on the surface. It's all the columbic, all the, all the, all the charge, they are involved in the, in the end storage. Not, not, uh, they are not uh, contribute to the side reaction. Okay, and also we test our materials. If we use our, uh, if you use zinc in the seawater, you can see, uh, really rough CV curves. So that, that may be because of the side reactions happening on the surface, which can be uh, because of different reasons. For example, decomposition of the, like corrosion of the surface of the zinc or the decomposition of the uh, electrolyte like water, okay? 
and also we test the per performance of the both zinc and the zinc mount is alloy <coughs> at a different current density and we see how the columbic efficiency can be affected by the applied current density okay and as you can see here we increase the current from 10 milliampere to 20 and then and later to 30 milliampere per square centimeter and you can see that this red dot is always very stable and maintains at almost 100 percent columbic efficiency for our zinc magnets, which means our alloy is quite stable at different current density. But the zinc, the printing zinc, may increase the current density, the cycle number decreasing dramatic, dramatically, drastically. That means higher current density can increase the corrosion rate on the surface of the zinc, but uh, our alloy is quite stable at a different current density. Okay, and then later on, we try uh, extreme conditions, which is 80 milliampere per square centimeter. And you can see that uh, this red one is for our alloy can last for almost 800 hours, very close to 800 hours, which is very long, long time. But uh, at such kind of extreme conditions, zinc, Princeton zinc can quickly die within one day, like uh, less than 24 hours it's quickly died there, okay? But uh, the alloy is quite stable at such, under such kind of extreme conditions. And then we want to see what happens there because the most important issue we're trying to see is, is there any dendrite formed on the surface? Because that is one of the key issue that can make the battery die, okay? So we want to see how those kind of zinc magnet alloy with uh, 3D structures with the protrude and the trench, how those kind of <coughs> hierarchical uh, structure of the zinc magnets can help to <coughs> uh, suppress the dendrite formation, okay? So firstly, let me see how I can open this video. Okay. So if you can see this video, is this the in situ like a imaging video, okay? So you can clearly see how this dark region can be become lighter and uh, and become shiny and shining, because the darker color means uh, the deeper, uh, the, the the more deeper of the of the trench of the trench, the shiny part is the protrude of the zinc magnet alloy. You can see that when we do the plating zinc plating, you can see the zinc prefer to cover all those dark region first and until uh, all the surface has a really uniform color contrast, okay? That means <coughs> zinc prefer to deposit between the protons inside, uh, inside of those trench, okay? And we want to, uh, if you cannot really see clearly, we add some color to the image. You can see that uh, this dark blue region is the, is the places that has a uh, uh, like a, uh, has a, like a, the deeper dense, okay, and the depth and the, the 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 like the yellow color means you have a protrude because you have a much thicker film deposit in this region, okay. So we take out three different places, okay. These two rows they are uh, from different. Uh, like a trench, okay? This one is from the protrude of the zinc magnet alloy. So we do the plating at, under the same condition, you can see that uh, this trench become uh, fully covered where they are filled with the zinc until they show the same similar color with a, uh, with a nearby protrude, okay? Same thing happened here. But when you look at the protrude itself, it also shows some color change means some kind of zinc also deposit on the, on the surface, but the deposition rate as compared to the, to the trench, the zinc deposition rate on the protrude is much lower, okay? That again indicates that uh, <coughs> when you do the zinc plating, zinc iron prefer to deposit inside of those trench, okay? The reason is we do some kind of uh, like, <coughs> 
console simulation, we see that uh, we use those semi pair to represent the protod. And uh, each protod, you have a trend there. Okay. And this dark red color means higher, yeah, yeah, like uh, electric field. Okay. This blue and the uh, uh, green color, green color means the lower, like uh, uh, electric field. You can see that uh, between the protod inside of the trench, you have a much stronger electric field. Because we know that uh, metal plating is a kind of, uh, the driving force is, uh, once the driving force is the electric field. So the higher electric field you can create it, the higher deposition rate that you can, you can achieve. That's the reason uh, in our materials, you can see a lot of zinc plated between the protod. That is because of the greatly enhanced electric field between the electrode, between the two protons, okay? And when you add more layer, thick layer on the top of the uh, semi-sphere, means you deposit more zinc on the surface, you can partially reduce, reduce the uh, electric field between the protons. That's the reason when you keep deposit uh, more and more zinc on the surface, uh, as a result, the overall electric field on the surface of the electrode will become uniform. And uh, if you keep depositing more zinc, all the surface, will, uh, all the deposition rate will become uniform. It will become a homogeneous deposition of the zinc on the surface, okay? And here we can make a comparison using our in situ uh, like uh, imaging system. You can see here the left one is the, how the zinc deposit can make the change of the surface. You can see that eventually all the surface will become homogeneous with the color, okay? But uh, when you check the Princeton zinc, you can see that the dendrite is suddenly coming from somewhere, okay? It's really randomly from somewhere. You can see the zinc dendrite from here. You can see it really uh, like um, not a really regular shape. And you can see some of the sharp surface, sharp tip, sharp tip. That may make the, <coughs> the separator or make the battery short circuit, okay? And then eventually we are also very interested in uh, how the reversibility of the plating scraping process of the zinc on the surface of the metal, okay? We still take some imaging. You can see here, when we do the plating, the protrude, uh, the, the trench become like a, it's filled with the zinc. When you do the scraping, you can see those zinc go back to the solution, okay? So eventually all the trench go back to the initial state, okay? That means our plating stripping process uh, is, is quite reversible, okay? So our uh, 3D structure only as a template to get the zinc deposition and the stripping process during the zinc iron battery charging discharging process. They are not directly involved in any chemical reaction uh, in the batteries, okay? And uh, as, a proof, uh, uh, as a proof of uh, concept, so we assemble some batteries, we test it under 4C, you can see that it can be last very long. But uh, when you use zinc metal, <coughs> the zinc metal will die quickly after before 400 cycles, but our battery can last for over 2000 cycles. We can still run it for a longer time, but uh, we just stop here to make a comparison. And we also, uh, test under different uh, current density. And uh, eventually, uh, if you just look at each of the uh, charging charging circle cycle, you can see that uh, zinc magnets can give you much better, much more ca capacity for the energy storage, okay? So now we want to know why this happens. <clears throat> because you know that we are using seawater as a solvent. We know that naturally, uh, you have uh, some cation dissolved, naturally dissolved in seawater, which is particularly uh, like uh, ma magnesium and uh, sodium and other some kind of minor cations. Those cations may involve in the energy storage and contribute uh, additional energy storage to your battery, okay? So that's the reason we do some uh, control experiments and we do observe that uh, both sodium and, uh, and the magnesium uh, can contribute to the energy storage in the battery, okay? So those kind of uh, ions can be uh, 
either absorbed or intercalate into the into the materials. Okay, <clears throat> and also we also want to study the ion interference from the seawater because we know chlorine is one of the major ion naturally like exists in the seawater, which is uh, really uh, not a really good things element because a uh, chlorine oxidation reaction strongly compete with the oxygen evolution reaction in the seawater. Oxygen evolution reaction is a, <clears throat> is a key uh, like a part uh, for the stability of the seawater. So we, we do not want the oxygen evolution happen there. But uh, the same thing is we don't want the chlorine can be oxidized during the charging discharging process. But when we uh, do some tests, we do not see any kind of uh, chlorine involved in our uh, reactions. And also some other uh, minority of the uh, cations, for example, calcium, they are not directly involved in the charging discharging process. So therefore we, ex <coughs> we exclude the participa participation of chlorine and, and calcium <coughs> in our reaction, okay? <clears throat> and as a result, uh, we also assemble some zinc air batteries as a as a demonstration. Okay, and <clears throat> and again, you can see that it can last really long. And uh, you can if you see this video, <clears throat> you can see that we assemble a kind of a solid state like a flexible batteries that can easily to power an electric fans. So which is really good demonstration how good of our uh, like a dendrite free uh, metal anode, okay? And uh, as a result, as a summary, so <clears throat> because our lab recently is very interested in developing different uh, seawater based energy devices, we try to harvest energy, we try to produce hydrogen from seawater, and we try to uh, use seawater as a earth abundant uh, energy sources in different energy devices. So therefore, I just want to share more like our recent development in our lab. So the first one is we try to combine uh, electrolyzer with the solar energy, something like uh, we produce a plasmon enhanced artificial photosynthesis materials that can clearly, that can efficiently produce hydrogen from the seawater, okay? The second one is we just published recently, we developed uh, new materials that can be used for seawater electrolyzer, okay? You don't need to uh, like a split, like a drinking water. You just use whatever waste water or seawater as a source. You can, you can easily to collect hydrogen from those waters using uh, our high efficiency materials, okay? So we do some device design, reactor designs, and then we do the two electrode device testing for a longer time. So we, 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 we play with different kind of seawater technology in our lab. Not only for the battery, we try to harvest uh, hydrogen energy from the seawater. And also we are trying to uh, use seawater in different ways. So that's the most, uh, most recent uh, research interest that is undergoing in my lab. And lastly, thank you so much for attention. I think I have all information present here. Okay, thank you so much.